One, check, test. One, two, three. Check, one, two, three. He, the, check, one, two, three. Check, check, test, one, two, one, two. Check, test, test, one, two, three. Check, check, one, two, one, two. One, two, three, check, testing, one. Testing, two, three, check, check. Testing, one, check, test, one, two, three. Check, testing, one, two, three, check, check, test, one, two, three. the gospel to her and uh, somehow we're gonna move over the other tent side of the square and see how things go over there. So I'm out here tonight to preach the, the Bible, to preach the Word of God, because that's what Christians are called to do. Jesus Christ said for his followers to go into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. That's what Christians ought to be doing, at least some of them. But they are kind of scarce in Murfreesboro, aren't they? Especially compared to the, uh, the multitude of church buildings that we have in Murfreesboro. You got church buildings everywhere and presumably church goers. Religious people, they like to go to their church building, but how many of them are obeying Jesus Christ? You ever see any of them going, going out and preaching the gospel to the lost people? No. <clears throat> That's what we call false converts. They're the religious people. They go to their church buildings. They sing songs to Jesus, but they've never been born again. They are hypocrites, is what they are. Religious, hell-bound hypocrites that need to come to repentance. The religious people that love their church buildings, they love their religiosity, they love their piety, and they love themselves. And they have no mind for Jesus Christ. They need to come to faith in Jesus Christ and repentance towards God. They need to have a broken heart and a contrite spirit toward God. That's what all of mankind needs. Because the Word of God says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means everybody's in trouble on Judgment Day who hasn't been born again. Particularly the, the hardened, prideful, religious, church-going people. Some, some people think that just because they go to a church building, just because they put money in an offering plate, just because they know all the psalms, songs in the hymn book, they think that's how they're going to heaven. They think, well, Christian's going to heaven, and I must be one of them. And that's not true. People don't go to heaven because of their religious activity. People go to heaven when they're born again. And people are only born again when they humble their heart toward God in grief and sorrow and put their faith in Jesus Christ, that his shed blood on the cross of Calvary about 2,000 years ago. That was the... That was the atonement. That was the atoning blood that can wash away your sin. You need to put your faith in Him. <clears throat> now there are going to be people that put their faith in their self-righteousness and it's going to be gone on Judgment Day. They're going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do many wonderful works? And he's going to say, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. 
and you're going to be bound hand and foot and cast into the everlasting lake of fire and brimstone. You know why? Because you deserve it. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. It is talking about eternal death. It's talking about death and hell and the everlasting lake of fire and brimstone where the smoke of your torment will rise up forever. That's what's going to happen if you die in your sin. If you haven't actually put your faith in Jesus Christ and actually been humble toward God and been of a broken heart and a contrite spirit toward him because of the wicked sinner you've made yourself, there's a lot of sin in Murfreesboro and a lot of sinners. That's how it works. So many people getting drunk, even on a Friday night. People that love to smoke their marijuana, making themselves lazy and stupid and dumb. You ever try and talk to those potheads? They say, oh, it's natural. It's okay to set it, and set it on fire and suck the smoke into my lungs and blow my mind. It's natural, right? Well, Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, you can't love God when you're high on the devil's lettuce. You can't love your neighbor when you're wasted. I mean, we even have, we have alcohol all over Murfreesboro. There's stores everywhere where you can get drunk. How can you love God and how can you love neighbor when you've been boozing it up, when you're liquored up? Then you make foolish decisions. How many people get diseases after a night of drinking? They wake up in the morning and say, oh no, what have I done? <clears throat> That's why the Bible calls us to have a, to be of a sober mind sober from alcohol and just sober just sober in general you need to be a temperate person the drunkards aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God they're going to get paid the people that uh, seek after the pleasure of their flesh in this world they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God they're going to get paid for their sin they're going to get their wages I'm here to tell you folks, you don't want the wages for your sin. Not if you had any good sense. Because the wages of your sin is death, thus saith the Lord. The wages of your sin is eternal death. Makes no sense. What makes no sense? That's not a very good argument. Try again. So you can avoid the wages of your sin. You can avoid God's judgment. And you could get a gift. You could get a free gift that you don't deserve, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You could have the free gift, but most people don't want it. Most, po most people don't want salvation through Jesus Christ. What do they want instead? The lust of the flesh, the lust of their eyes, and the pride of life. They want sex, and they want drugs, and they want to get drunk, and they want everybody to think they're all that in a bag of chips. That's what most people want. They don't care about what God expects of them. The fact that the only reason that you're on this earth, or the whole, your whole duty on this earth, or your purpose, is to fear God and keep His commandments. That's what you're supposed to be doing. If you're not fearing God and keeping His commandments, you are living your life wrong, wrong, wrong. Again, the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep His commandments. And if that's not you, you are wrong. You need to get right. You need to get humble. You need to have faith. That's the only thing that can do you so good. That's the only thing that can fix your problem between you and God since you've sinned against Him. Is if you go to God with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Say, oh God, what a wicked sinner and disgusting thing in your eyes I've made myself. If you had your faith in Jesus Christ, not just sing songs about Him, not just put a bumper sticker on your car, but if you actually had faith in Him, then God would be faithful and justified in saving your soul. It's called faith and repentance. That's what you need. Other than that, you're just going to burn in hell forever because you deserve it. You know you've lied to people. You deserve to burn. You know you've, you've stolen from people. You deserve to burn. You know you've been prideful. You deserve to burn. But you don't have to. God could have mercy on you. God could have mercy on anybody out here in the square today. But the prideful people, 
They are being resisted by God. If you're prideful today, the Christian God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is resisting you. Do ye think that the Scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Yes, if you've actually been born again through faith in Jesus Christ and repentance towards God and not just a deceived churchgoer, yes, God would give you more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. So if you're a prideful person today, no grace for you. Not one bit. You're just going to get judgment and wrath and fire for all of eternity. You don't have to. You could be born again. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. That's what we need in Murfreesboro. That's who God is looking for. It's those that have a humble heart and a contrite spirit are the ones that, are, that God is near unto. Because prideful people are a stench in the nostrils of God. Pride is wickedness. Being prideful is wickedness. We got our bad philosophies in America, don't we? I bet, you, I bet everybody out here heard some bad philosophies that go around in America, like proud to be an American. You shouldn't be prideful. You should be grateful. You should be grateful to God that you live in a nation where you can earn a living, where you can have food to eat, where you can have... You should be grateful to God that you get to live in America. Pride is evil. Pride is a... A prideful heart is a wicked heart. You should be humble toward God say, Praise God, I live in America. And you should be thankful in sincerity to him for that. That you live to, can live in a relatively free nation. You should be thanking God you live in America. But the prideful people, they're just wasting it. They're wasting it. It's not going to do them any good on Judgment Day. Everything you have on this earth, everything you think is so swell in your life, you ain't taking it with you. If you haven't been born again, all you're going to get is the wages of your sin, which is death on Judgment Day. What a shame that would be. I certainly don't want anybody to get the wages of their sin, which is death. I want you to get the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But so many, so many prideful people, they say, well, I've gone to church all my life. I'm going to heaven, right? <clears throat> Wrong answer. You don't go to heaven by calling yourself a Christian, going to church, doing good works. If you think that's getting it, getting you to heaven, that's because you have rejected Jesus Christ. If you think being a good person gets you to heaven, you have rejected Jesus Christ. You have rejected his doctrine, you have rejected his word, and you've rejected his salvation. <clears throat> You need to go, go to God with a humble heart and a contrite spirit because you are such a bad person. Because you have sinned before God and you have no excuse. God gave all of mankind a conscience. You are with knowledge. You, in your conscience, you know the laws of God. You know it's wrong to lie. You know it's wrong to steal. You know it's wrong, wrong to look at dirty pictures. You know it's wrong to get drunk. You know it's wrong to do your drugs. You have a conscience. God gave you a conscience. You're not going to be able to stand before God on Judgment Day and say, Lord, I didn't know it was a sin to drink a 12-pack every Friday night. You're not going to say, Lord, I didn't know it was a sin to fornicate with strangers in a foreign country. He's seen it all and he's got it all written down. And the weight of your sin and his judgment is going to come down on you right after your last heartbeat when you appear before him. When you die in your sin. You need to be of a broken heart and a contrite spirit before God. It's that humility of heart. That's what God's looking for. He's not looking for a religious person. He's not looking for somebody who will go to church a whole bunch. He's not looking for somebody to give their money to the poor so they can feel better about themselves. God's not looking for somebody who thinks they're better than other people. God is looking for somebody, again, who's humble, who's contrite, and realize what a wicked, terrible person they are, and they will go to the, go to God in humility of heart. They'll go to God in repentance.
And if you have faith in Jesus Christ, then you might be born again. Matter of fact, you definitely will, definitely will be. If you have a humble heart and a contrite spirit and have faith in Jesus Christ, you will be born again. If you go to church a million times, that won't help. It may make you worse. But again, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, that's good news. As long as you don't want what the devil's selling. A lot of people, they don't resist the devil. They embrace the devil. They say, come on, devil, give me some more alcohol. They say, come on, devil, let me find a loose woman that I can get her pants off tonight. A lot of people embrace the devil. They say, devil, come on, devil, let me find some more marijuana. Let me find some more crack. The devil would, the devil would flee if you would resist him. But that's what's wrong with America. That's why we got so many problems. People love the devil. How wicked is that? And if the devil's your father, you're going to go to hell with your father, the devil. You need a new daddy is what you need. If the devil is your father, you got a bad daddy. You need a good daddy. But you got to go to the only true and living God, God the Father, with a humble heart and a contrite spirit because you've been so wicked. And then you would have his mercy, you would have his grace, you would have his spirit, you could have his wisdom. You could have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the good news today. You don't have to live your wicked, wicked, miserable life. I mean, that's why people smoke cigarettes, because their life sucks. That's why people have got to get drunk every week, because their life sucks. They're miserable. That's why people have to put, on, put their hands on every stranger that, that, that will allow them because they're living miserable, pointless, puny lives. You don't know what you don't know what life is for.